Hello boys and girls, welcome to the channel. This is DoorDash Sucks here on YouTube and uh, uh, I, I, I posted or pasted a whole bunch of different random videos that I did during the, uh, the, sh the morning shift of Thursday, um, this Thursday. I started around 7.30 so you might hear some random things and everything but I, I pasted it all together so I could just put it out. Plus there's a comment video in this video as well. So, but, uh, and I wanted to make this at the beginning of the video, uh, because I recorded this last, so I could show you my, um, my ratings so far. So I have a 5.0 rating, which is probably not going to stay 5.0 too long, because you're always going to have a jerk that'll just give you a 1 or a 2 or something like that. I, I could care less. I always stay between 4.96 and 5.0 anyways. I've never dropped lower. Now, it's interesting because I have a 66% uh, acceptance rate, but don't let that deceive you. I didn't do that on purpose, folks. Um, however, can I say that I didn't take some that I didn't really, really want to take? Yeah, because I didn't want to sit all day making nothing, right? So, and I'm at 93% completion rate, so I need to get that back up to like 95 and there's about... I don't know, five days left to possibly hit top dasher. Now, do I really want to be a top dasher? No. But I would kind of be foolish at this point not to try to get it because if I get it, I can do dash now. I'm not doing it for any other reason but that. Now, if I was low in the 30s or 40s or even 20s or even 10s, I wouldn't I wouldn't even try to do it. I never thought that I, I would ever try to do another top dasher thing but it'd be cool in the month of um february because february is slow real slow it's probably slower than january um to have top dasher so i can go to any market anytime i want anywhere and it doesn't matter that will be an advantage in itself but to try for me to just try to get it to to go all month long no way now, the only thing is, I don't even know if I have 100 deliveries in this month because I haven't worked a lot and it's been slow. So it'll suck if I don't get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> and I have 3,459 deliveries. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on that. And if I hit 3,500 deliveries lifetime, which is possible to get because I only need another like 40 or 45, I think I should be up over 100 like for sure but it's gonna be tough to see so i just wanted to show you where i was and other people in the comments wrote hey you're if you're kind of near there you should try to go for it so i'm going to i'm gonna try but only for dash now not for any other reason you know um so anyways let's continue on with the video continue to watch please thank you hi folks welcome back to another video just wanted to report a couple of things so it's about 8.30 in the morning on Monday. I, you guys won't see this till later or whatever, but I'm just documenting it. But uh, <clears throat> So I started out around 7.21. My first delivery that came through was a $10.25 order for nine miles. And I was like, you know what? Let me take it, even though I don't want to take it, really. Let me start out the day, right? So I did that. Then I got another one for $6.98 going like... I don't know, five miles. So I did that one. So then I was like, all right, I'm done with this crap. Like, you know, let's see if something more is going to come in. Now, remember, it's morning time. It's a Monday morning. But usually I used to have really good starts in the morning, morning time working on the DoorDash app. Uh, if I turn on Uber Eats, it's hit or miss. And it doesn't that doesn't really get a little slightly busy till like near lunchtime because people are doing shopping or whatever. So they started sending me a barrage of insane orders, like six dollars for ten miles, right? Another one for McDonald's, like five, four, four seventy-five for like nine miles, and and then and then another one came in, and then I just declined all of them. So now, you know, and then I just missed one because I had my app. I was, uh, I have an application that closes out all the background apps, so it will help the phone focus on whatever you have turned on it's called kill apps if you guys don't know what that app is you could go over to google play store and download it but i have the kill apps pro and it kills all the background stuff so it helps 
utilize your phone, you know? So when I did that and I turned the app back on, it's, it said, you have encountered an error. So apparently they tried to send me a delivery. Okay, now here's, here's one coming in. All right, so this one sucks, but I'm going to do it, right? But I was at 60% and I'm probably down to 58 for declining. Um, it's, they, you know, the DoorDash app always tries to send you whatever it can send you to get whatever order they want out. And they don't care who takes it. That's why there's a million people, I mean, millions of people on this on this app working at any given time, okay? Um, they, they, DoorDash is only going to do what benefits them. Now, if you happen to be the one that takes the deliveries that you take, then so be it. And if you happen to get a good one, then so be it. They, they don't really care because it all comes down to they know that there are more people on this platform that do not tip or they're real low tippers. And the past two orders that I did were like only like 275 and 325 in tips. People are so cheap, especially in the morning times. Just because they're getting some coffees, they can't throw a, even a $5 bill in there. They have to give you something under five bucks. And then when dinner time comes, they only give you a $5 bill or less. That's the average person that is, that is um, you know, buying food on DoorDash. Now, uh, the thing is, is that, uh, you know, Kim, uh, Kim, the Kim channel, I don't know her full, the full name. I forgot it because I got to get used to that. This, this Kim channel, Kim's channel that does DoorDash, she reported that there's been like these pauses that have been going on, ghost pausing and all that stuff. I got to watch that entire video. I might even play it on my channel. I don't know. She's got about 5,000 subscribers. She's probably a pretty good channel. I don't know. I've never watched her. She's probably just a regular girl, you know, trying to do her thing and showing you tips and tricks. But, you know, she's not boasting. I don't think she's boasting about how much money she's making. She's actually telling you the truth, like, hey, when stuff happens. And when a channel's doing that, that's a good thing. When you, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, um, if you're going to, um, report on things, then report on the whole situation. Don't just report on, you know, good things that are happening, report on the bad things that are happening. And you know, it's funny because you know, like some people think that all I have is just bad news, negative news all the time. It's not necessarily, sometimes there is good news or there's things to tell you, but until there is good news, you know, I have to continue to do the mission here as far as exposing the companies for what they're doing to us because all of these tactics and the things that they do they're, they're trying to get rid of you they're trying to get rid of get basically tell you to get lost do you know why they won't deactivate most of the the uh og drivers like just to get rid of them is because they know they'd have one major lawsuit on their hands because if they do that then that's that's part of us being an independent contractor right making our own decisions and being able to do what we want, which we can't. That's all been a lie from the start, folks. I mean, we all know that. Uh, but the thing is, is we have to navigate the best way we can through these apps, right? And, and in fact, going to other apps and trying them out as well. Now, with that said, many reasons why people are using the apps. We don't, we can list thousands of them if we want, you know, one of them is just because you want extra money. The other is because you may have lost a job. The other is you hated your job and you left to take this job. Um, you wanted freedom. You wanted independence. You blah, 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 right? But it sucks when you're trying to do all of that and then you have a company that just says, oh, no, 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 no. You got to do it our way or or it's the highway. And that, that's, not, that's not a good attitude. So when we bring these people into court and we hold them accountable for it, see, what I would love to see in, this, in, in the gig community is people starting to go to jail, to jail, prison time for, the, for the, the practices that they've done, which will probably, it's a pipe dream and it'll probably never happen, but Dara Kashashahi, Tony Shu, Fiji Simo, Logan Green, all of these scumbag um, CEOs of these companies need to need to go to jail. And it's not just them, it's their controllers that are behind them, you know. But uh, I just wanted to ponder the, a couple of the thoughts about what I had to say because it's important. Uh, I'm going to try to maybe put this video together with something else and just, uh, so I'll be right back with something else. 
Okay, folks, uh, I wanted to talk to you about some solutions today. Solutions of, of certain uh, things that are going on in the gig community. And I uh, wanted to talk about uh, tips from customers and base pay from DoorDash or Uber Eats or any company that you hope and think that you should get more base pay. Instacart, whatever, right? So um, why don't we start... Uh, emailing individually all of us emailing the companies and telling them how strongly we don't like their base pay that they're paying us and asking them to raise it up and bring it back to the nine ten dollar range on every order and then when it's an additional like say 10 miles somewhere then they add in another 10 so you get like 20 dollar base pays how does that sound folks um that's that's a good solution isn't it and then another solution is how about confronting the customers that aren't tipping us correctly and telling them how much they should be putting in the order like telling them like okay so you ordered a hundred dollars worth of food i'd like to get paid twenty dollars uh uh from you as a 20 20 percent of, of what the order was the other thing is is uh, asking the companies to uh to educate their customers on telling uh, telling the customers that they should be tipping us generously in the in the apps um what else can i think of here um you know how about here's another here's another solution how about making doordash uber grubhub any of these delivery apps making it so they we take away the option for them to receive a tip from our customers and letting it put be put into our Venmo and PayPal accounts. In other words, start telling the customers, please don't tip me in the app. Please tip me in my PayPal or my Venmo. Or could you please, I, I would like to be paid in cash. I think that those are good options, don't you folks? Those are some good solutions. What do you guys think, folks? I mean, Uber Jeep Arizona, big shout out to him. He was saying uh, in one of his videos a while back that uh, he 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 talks to all his rideshare people and he tells them like not to tip him in the app, but he gives them a card with his Venmo. It like in other words, he has a small business card. How about drawing up some business cards with your PayPal or your Venmo and having your customers tip you uh, like that? Now it will take a lot more effort with delivery driving uh, gigs like the apps, but it's easy, easier to do with rideshare because the, the, um, the person doesn't have to tip you until the end of the fare. With delivery, we all get tipped at the beginning of the job. So remember that, folks. So um, anyways, just a couple of thoughts I wanted to put out for some solutions that, to our problems that we're having. Those, those are temporary ones or maybe even permanent. Please write in the comments section what you think about what I said. And I'll catch you guys and gals on the next one. Take care. Hello, folks. Welcome to, back to the channel. This is DoorDash Sucks here on YouTube. And I uh, wanted to just give you an update on, on my situation and what I'm doing to kind of better my situation, as they say. Is um, So you remember I told you in previous videos, folks, like when you when you go to these stores that you deliver to and stuff like that, is always kind of keep a good rapport with the managers and get to know them and all of that. Well, in my, now I don't know how this is going to pan out or anything, but I'm just giving you an update on it. Plus, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, Panera Catering. So anyways, I just I needed to go in to use the Wi-Fi to Panera because the video that you guys probably saw <clears throat> earlier today, you won't see this till later tonight probably, but the video you saw, I, it took me a long time to... Oh, look at this. They just paused me, folks. They just paused me. They said, oh, we tried to send you a, uh, something. They didn't send me anything. That's like, that's crap. Did you see anything come through on the screen, folks? They just paused me. This is what uh, the Kim channel said there. Kim's, uh, I can't remember the name of her channel, but she did this. She talked about the very same thing. I'm, I'm sitting here and they're just pausing it, right? Well, the reason I'm sitting is to try to make the video for you. But anyways, let me get back to what I was saying. So, um, it, so I'm waiting for orders and stuff coming through. But I was like, let me go in to upload my video. Because I, I, it was a, like a 2 gigabyte or 3 gigabyte file that I had to upload. I usually compress them 
I use a compressor to compress the video, so it's, you know, that's why sometimes people say, hey, geez, I can't read the comments, because it views it down to a lower quality, you know? So long story short, I'm in there, while I'm in there, I'm like, hey, Sean, right? I knew the manager, and I was like, I said, Sean, uh, I go, you still hiring? He's like, yeah, well, yeah. He goes, he goes, we just hired about four other people. He goes, um, he goes, I could talk to Laurie, you know, the, one of the managers. I said, yeah, I'm interested in, in possibly working here. I said, but I, I need, I, and I basically told him what I needed. I said, I said, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday would be good. I would even possibly do a Thursday. But I said, I need to keep my weekends open for my gig work. So he understood that. And he said, yeah, you know what? I'll talk to Laurie. Why don't you make out an application online and we'll see how it goes. So I'm in the process of that, folks. Because, you know, and I don't, and Panera is kind of a fun place to work anyways. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind doing it. I've worked in fast food places before. It gets hectic at lunch and all that. But who cares, right? Now, I think they pay... 17 plus or more an hour which is not great but it's better than 1670 and if i if i might even be able to get more than that i don't know but the monday tuesday and wednesdays suck anyways in my market so i'm, I'm thinking to myself why not and then just use like if they only even if they gave me two days a week at least it's something with my foot in the door because maybe i bit myself in the ass and and i probably should have took the other job even though i didn't really want to do it and like to do it sometimes we get forced to do things in life we don't want to do right but i need to i do need a footing in another type of job so anyways that's where i'm possibly things are going to happen there and i'm still going to do the gig work and all of that obviously but um i wanted to talk to you about panera bread catering okay and i just found out something a little bit interesting so about a week ago or so i took a panera bread out of uh, another town from where where I am right now, right? And it, I, I had never gotten a catering out of there, and I got it, and I got a zero tip out of it. I, I think you guys remember the video I made on that, talking about it. And so, like, over here at this Panera, it's a different Panera location, and there's a girl in there named Joy, and she does all the catering. She just came out with, like, 15 catering bags, or, like, probably three or four different trips that she's going on. And I've asked her, how's the tips been lately? She's like, ah, oh, not really good lately. She go, But she usually makes like a thousand bucks a week. I mean, she told me before, I believe her because some of these catering orders are $1,500, folks. And, they, and, and, these, and they're getting the direct tips. The tips are being put in directly, okay? In, so in other words, there's no middleman. It goes, when they order from the Panera website, the tip goes in and it goes right to the, to the driver. Uh, that would be awesome if I could get inside with Panera and just do the, do catering, but I don't think that's going to happen because Joy's not going to give up that position. However, the reason I'm, I'm noting it is because I guess some of these lo localized restaurants have the option to either call up a DoorDash driver if they need it, or they use the in-house. So it's v interesting to know that they have their own in-house. And hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Those, those employees have been working there. They have every right to. And I, to be honest with you, the in-house stuff is, is a lot better than going through DoorDash because DoorDash is going to steal money from the drivers and manipulate and everything. And that they're just a third party. Why not do it direct right from the restaurant? So it's too bad. You know, like I, I you know, I know something about certain channels that like a kind of doing their own, I mean, as a driver, you can like walk into restaurants and say, Hey, do you guys need any catering people? Like, you know, to, to do your, do your bidding. Like, in other words, I should probably go into some of these Italian restaurants and say, Hey, I know you're using DoorDash, but guess what? I can make it so you won't be charged any fees for your catering. I'll, I'll make sure that all the money goes to you. And all I want is just a small fee and a tip. And I think you want to talk about solutions. This is this is one of the solutions. I think that we should become proactive folks and go out and start doing our own delivery services. You know, Brian's delivery service. You know what I mean? Uh, it's just like doing a limo or whatever, whatever else. But you, if you can establish even with a few restaurants, just two or three, and you had enough catering to do privately with them, you could make way more than two and three hundred dollars a day and i think this is what some of the other drivers are doing but i wanted to put that in your ear because i'm not going to hold back from telling you about that 
That's a good idea, isn't it? It's a good solution, isn't it? So there are solutions that are out there for certain for things that we need to do to better our situations. And, you know, I will give a credit to Pedro for saying that because, to be honest with you, the video that he made about me actually made me motivate my own self. You know, I have my own opinions and facts and things like that, but you know what? He's right about that. Like, we we can, to a point, change our own situations. We can. Um, so there is, there's a lot of options, folks. So anyways, thank you, brother, for motivating me, Pedro. Um, so anyways, uh, what do you guys think about those, you know, those ideas? Um, of course, it takes a lot of footwork because you have to, like, become friendly with, with managers and talk to them. You can't just, like, walk in, hey, my name's Brian, and I like to do your catering. They're just going to laugh at you. So you kind of have to, I don't know, we got to think of ways to do it. But. I mean, why not eliminate? But see, they might have a contract with DoorDash too, and that's that can be a problem because they might say, "Well, we're contracted with DoorDash." See, DoorDash, see how they they infiltrate every as- aspect of of of, of uh, delivery businesses and 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 restaurants because they have the the company sign a contract with them saying that you won't use probably won't use any other service than what we're providing for you, right? But it's funny because I think even the companies, look, Panera, the the manager just told me, hey, we have our own in-house, but when we want them to come up, when we want someone to deliver it or we don't have someone, we do call a driver in. So I'm thinking, you know what? There's a way to bypass it. You know what I mean? And I'm sure if it's a good manager and owner of a store, he probably would do it. And you could make maybe your own contract with him and say, hey, I have exclusive, like I will be here anytime you need me to do, 24 hours a day, blah, blah, blah. You can write up your own little contract with them and then say, look, I'll be here to provide the service for you, you know? So anyways, write in the comments what you guys think about this, kind of like devising your own delivery catering, even if it's just for catering. You don't have to take all of their orders that come out of there. You take the catering orders, the ones that go to these local businesses. This girl, Joy, just walked out literally with 15 bags. She had about three to four stops that she was going to. So she's going to make like, she's probably going to make two, three hundred bucks on, on just that in, in tips. Unbelievable, folks. I just wanted to report that to you. But anyways, uh, just thought I'd run that by you guys. Tell me what you think in the comments, and I'll see you guys and gals on the next one. Take care. Well, folks, you know it's getting bad when you don't see any uh, red areas at all in in, in you know in the surrounding places that you live, you know what I mean? Like nothing. Um, boy, it's getting bad folks. Um, I don't know about you or where you live, but I used even in the morning time, like right now it's nine 30. I've been, I've been on for two hours. Um, I, I, on DoorDash, I've only made $4 and 25 cents. And the guy left a dollar, dollar 50 tip. I made 15 on Uber and then in between that, I went to the library to fill out because uh, that was close by where I was. And I went in to use the computer to fill out an application for Panera Bread. Um, I'm going to try to do some part-time work there, maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays. Try to keep the weekends open for other things. But um, start planning your exit strategies, folks, because <laughs> these apps... Are not the solution. You cannot sustain yourself on these apps at all. Not with the way everything's going. I hope you guys all watched the video that I put out, the two hour and 18 minute video. It's an important one. There's a lot of information in there, especially if you're a gig worker, you delivery driver, ride share. You definitely want to watch that and it's going to blow your mind. I'll tell you that. But um, yep, it's a, it's a lovely day in the neighborhood, as they said. Um, who knows how it's going to go for the entire day, but even in the past week, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of drivers in the area that I live that are just totally new drivers that I've never seen before. Take note of that when you go in and pick up from places. Just notice how many people that you don't even see anymore. I believe a lot of people have gotten out of this business and gone on to W-2 jobs and then a whole new slew of people come on. But wait till they find out how you can't make any money really anymore. It's it's utterly ridiculous. I mean, when you can't even make 
even a hundred bucks in a day, there's a serious problem. After 10 or 12 hours of working, right? <laughs> Anyways, having a little something to eat here and sitting around waiting for calls. It's wonderful. <laughs> well, how is it in your area, your neck of the woods where you live, folks? Is it this bad? Um, let me know in the comments. Um, anyways, just want to do a short video here for Thursday morning. Um, it's like, like I said, 930 or so. I mean, you know, morning time's not usually great, but I'm usually rolling a little, a little bit. There, there's so many drivers that whatever comes through, they're, they're just, you know, DoorDash and all of these companies, folks, they, they got us. They got us right where they want us. Like, all the money's being funneled to them, and we're getting all the crumbs. All of the crumbs. Well, what crumbs? There ain't even any crumbs coming off the plate right now. It's uh, terrible. All right, folks. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section. I'll uh, catch you on the next one. Take care. Hello, folks. Welcome to the channel. This is DoorDash Sucks Sucks here on <laughs> YouTube. And I uh, want to make a video uh, about uh, going into a different uh, market or different area. So where I normally dash, I, um, I decided to just go completely away from where I was. Uh, well, I shut my dash off and then I, I started to do Uber Eats. But Uber Eats, oh shit, Uber Eats has been, uh, I mean, these people are driving, this guy was just driving about 70 miles an hour down a 30, down, down a 25 mile an hour street, almost hit the car, unbelievable, you gotta have eyes in the back of your head, folks, when you're driving, anyways, back to what I was saying, um, so, um, Uber Eats is terrible, like, I, I took one, see, with Uber Eats, they hide, they hide, you know, tips and everything like wor way worse than DoorDash in a lot of ways because they're, they're starting to do them at four or five, six dollars and you don't know. But so I took one that was um, six something for eight miles total. Like it was like three point seven or four to the to the pickup and then another four, you know, basically under four for the uh, for the the drop off. But um, when I got there, right, now the lady lady texted me immediately as soon as I picked up the order. She says, oh, I'm going to be in a meeting. It was it was an apartment building. But all of the doors are locked. You can't get in. And she did say, well, if you can't get in, just leave it outside. But it's like um, people are afraid to give you their codes for their building, you know, to get in. And I don't really want to. I mean, it is what it is, right? And because, you know, I'm out here, right? I got to roll. I want to start rolling and make money. But you're not really making any money. I mean, I probably made $2 on that, on that, on that order. I don't know. So while I was in the area that I went, that was outside my area, I noticed dash now came back up. So it, it's, I'm in a busy area. Now, right now I'm heading to a, <clears throat> a beer, wine and liquor place for $17 and 50 cents for eight miles. I'll do it. You know what I mean? And you got to come out of your comfort zone a little bit to see what you can do or get, you know, and it's just one of those things. Um, my market <coughs> is absolutely atrociously bad. It is, it's, it's not even worth, worth doing it anymore in my market because even, even on a Friday, if I turn my app, if I have, if I'm scheduled, yeah, you'll get a few orders of deliveries here and there, but on a Friday night, everyone's working everyone um because they know that friday is a day that's the most the busiest of all the uh all of the times right so and then so with that so many people in my market forget about it so you got to go to a busier market that may be even you know watered down but at least it's better than sitting around and doing nothing i'd rather take five dollar deliveries going a couple of miles than just sitting completely and I don't even know how it's going to turn out for the rest of this day it's 12 10 in the afternoon um right after lunch on Thursday um 
I don't know when you guys will hear this, but it's just the fact that you're hearing the message about what's going on in the markets. I mean, I'm, I'm my own boots on the ground because I got to report what's going on in my market, you know. <clears throat> so I'm on my way to a pickup now, and then I'm going to drop that off in a little while. I mean, for God's sakes, if we can't even make $100 in a day, it's pretty sad, isn't it, folks? <laughs> And these channels are reporting they're making two, three, four hundred dollars a day and all this stuff. I mean, what a joke. Yeah, what planet do you live on? Mars? Holy crap. Maybe there's a colony on Mars we can go to, right? <laughs> if you believe that, I'll, I'll sell you some uh, beat oceanfront property in Arizona. Oceanfront property in Arizona. That's a song by, uh, what's his name? George Strait, if you've ever heard it. It goes oceanfront property in Arizona. From the porch you can see the sea. I've got some oceanfront property in Arizona. And if you buy that, I'll I'll throw the Golden Gate in for free. <laughs> oh man. My voice is a little hoarse and rough, but uh, I wanted to just cheer you up, make you laugh a little bit, folks. All right, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys and gals on the next one. Take care. <laughs>something's really wacky with this with the apps folks i mean with with doordash especially because i just got a notification telling me you have scheduled your dat you were supposed to be driving dashing 15 minutes ago you had a scheduled dash right and like i'm already i'm already um i'm already dashing and it's telling me that i have i have a scheduled dash like that's nuts I don't know. Folks, what the hell is going on with these apps, right? What the hell is going on? It's crazy. Crazy. So, um, anyways, uh, I ended up picking up this, uh, this delivery from this beer and wine thing, and I thought I was picking up, picking up, um, an alcohol order, but it wasn't. It was a, it was a sub shop, plus it was a deli place in, uh, they were quite busy in there with just regular people, and uh, I was lucky enough to get out within five minutes of being in there. I thought I was going to have to stay for like 20 minutes or something. I mean, this is a $17.50, um, I mean, seventeen fifty dollars uh, delivery, and I'm only having to go 4.6 more. It was showing eight miles, but I guess I didn't pay attention. I'm glad they didn't add any more on that's, that's already on here, you know. So, again, uh, I'm in a different area messing around on this Thursday, a little after lunchtime, almost 12.30. And I just wanted to report that it is, well, it's showing that it's busy. But, see, I don't, I don't trust anything about DoorDash. I, I also believe that they do put fake, fake red zones or pink zones out just to get people to go out when, when people aren't out. You know what I mean? Because they want certain areas covered that people don't stay at so don't chase those red zones folks do not i mean if you if you're passing by one you know fine i mean unless it showed like extremely busy like it was in dark red brown it says very busy that's different but like when they show like the light pink zones and stuff forget about it so you know i might have to just go completely to a whole nother area from now on and just get the hell out of my area because see people from out of town and and especially over the border of one socket rhode island they come into massachusetts over the border and they start driving around where i'm at so i think that's another reason not to not to mention how many drivers they got on but because um there's people from out of state coming into the state to drive they, keep, they won't stay in their own state, you know, and I understand why, because they don't pay much in Rhode Island. It's unbelievable. Even rideshare, if whatever the fares are here in Mass, it's half that when they take rides uh, inside Rhode Island. It's nuts. I mean, there's no standardized anything. It's all like whatever, you know. Anyways, just wanted to throw this in as a bonus, uh, a bonus clip for this last video. All right.
Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys and gals on the next one. Take care. Okay, so I, I just gave you a little tour of, uh, of like the area that I just dropped off in and I'm continuing the video here. I mean, there's some, there's some houses and stuff that I never showed you. You should see some of these brick ones. They look like castles. Like I didn't even show you the brick, the brick buildings, you know, the brick um, mansions. And, and it's like people write in the comments all the time, oh, well, the economy, like like the drivers defending DoorDash saying, or, or channel saying, oh, well, people just don't have the money. It's, they're kind of poor these days. Really? And you're living in those type of houses with three-car garages? <laughs> and then, like, I mean, if I hadn't have got a good tip from the guy, I mean, it was twelve fifty, and it was, uh, you know, the rest was base pay, right? But if I... Um, Hadn't I got that, you know I'd be bitching about this video. But, like, most of the time, you get screwed from these uh, people anyways, you know? So, now, the place that I came out of, it's called High Oaks Estates. So, these are, these are all, every single one of them, folks, was mansions. There was It wasn't even just regular houses. Now, I've come out of that area, and now these, like, I'm looking at the houses, and they're, you know, pretty normal. But even the normal houses out where I live, these, these are all expenses expensive houses i mean you can't even touch any of these houses around where i live for less than a million to two million dollars i mean um you'd be lucky if you could even get one for five six hundred thousand i mean it'd be it'd be a shack it'd be like jason Voorhees shack from uh friday the 13th or something <laughs> you know uh but uh what do you guys think about that don't you love when you go to those those places like you drop off at a really nice house and you get like a, a $2 tip or something in there. One of my friends was like, oh, that's how they become rich because they, they save money by not tipping you. And that's how they, <laughs> I was like laughing at it. You know, that's not true. But I mean, oh boy, people are stingy, aren't they folks? And then, and then we have to worry about if it's not bad enough, then we have to worry about, you know, DoorDash steal and ripping us off. Because you, you never really know what's really put in there. Um, I haven't been seeing too many really, like, hidden hidden tips in the orders. Like, usually a lot of the ones I've been getting have all, whatever it says is what it is, you know. Um, but we're far from transparency, folks. <laughs> you know, who knows if we'll ever get transparent. I mean, they're not even following the laws in, in, in New York City. You know what I mean? And, uh... Rideship professor just did a video like I mean he does a lot of videos but he did one that was like a guy from New York City complaining you know the one of the drivers and you know I don't blame them I mean they're, they're not even following the laws that were passed against the company did <laughs> this like overriding the laws isn't it just lovely and if you watch the video that I did about the World Economic Forum that two hours and 18 minute video you would see why all of this stuff is happening and and then once once you start to put the pieces of the puzzle together and you make sense of, of them right folks then you realize how how much the game is rigged against you you know and um it it sucks and a lot of people and a lot of people are um come on come on these people are just well Really? What are you guys doing? Like, everyone's sitting at four corners. Like, I mean, oh, man. You should have just saw this. This was a classic. Four cars sitting at four stop signs and not one person knew what to do. Do you know what you do when you see that, folks? The first person who comes to the stop sign is the first person who leaves in the intersection. But they're all looking at each other like deers in the headlights. I mean, people are just stupid. Stupid drivers. Holy crap. <laughs> oh, and that's another part of the aggravation we got to deal with is, is the idiot drivers. I mean, see, the good thing out where I live or, you know, the areas that I drive in, it's uh, it's spacious. In other words, it's not congested with traffic like the cities are, which is good, you know, um, because... It, uh, if, if, if you're in the city, you, you're screwed, you know, you just get screwed royally, um, I'm actually going to pull over in this area, and just pull over and stop, because I'm near an area where I can pick up, there's a few really good restaurants and stuff here, so, I mean, driving around is not, not the answer, folks, 
to keep um, driving around and wasting gas, you know. But uh, let me see. Let me go out of this. And, okay, yeah. Did I get paid? Oh, yeah, I got paid that. Okay, I was thinking about the money because I, I ended my dash, my other dash. I made, I made like $16 on the other dash, which was terrible for the whole morning. And then I'm, I started this new one about 45 minutes ago. So it's like, but at least I'm in a better area. Um, see, there's a whole bunch of, um, see this next area, Norwood, if I don't go there, because if I go there, they'll, they'll try to get me to go in towards Dedham and Boston and, and you get, you start to get drawn in and sucked in, in that area. And I do not want to go. That's the good thing about knowing the miles. Like you can see the miles before you leave. You you know, with rideshare, you never know where you're going. If you're doing rideshare, I don't do rideshare anymore. I've thought of getting back on to it just to see if there's a difference, but you know what? I'm just going to start going for W2 jobs and then working these this stuff in as 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 part time instead of doing it full time anymore. I I can't stand I mean, I can't take it anymore, folks. I just can't. But I'm still going to be in the fight, you know. I'm still going to fight against the corruption and expose it all and all that. Even if I wasn't driving, I would still do it. I mean, you know what I mean? If I went to a completely new job, I would still cuz I, that's how much I love you guys and how much of a stake of a claim that I have on them because they have continued to ruin, ruin the economy. It's all part of the plan to destroy America, folks. Don't ever forget that. I don't care what anyone else says. You may not see it now, but you will down the, down the road, even if it's a couple of years, two, three, four, five, even five years down the road. Pardon me. You're going to see what what has transpired and what took place just by with your own eyes you won't have to have me telling you anymore it's gonna happen and i'm not happy about it but i just know the the uh the reality of it you know so now it's 12 39 and i'm sitting around now let me go into uber eats because i had uber eats off because i was doing that one run and now i'm gonna turn uber eats on oh wow okay now this wait a minute, 15, 16, wait a minute, let me let me just see. Did they give me Let me see if I got screwed. Oh yeah. Yeah, $3.30. Yeah, I'm I'm still waiting for the tip. This is what sucks about Uber Eats, because you gotta sit here and wait for the tips to come through. Um yeah, so this one was a six dollar and seventy cent. Look at this. I took this, folks. I should never have taken it. 676 for 8.2 miles, right? I did it just to start getting going. All right, look at this. Now they want to send me for eight dollars for seven miles. Oh boy, it's a package delivery. Hmm. No, I'm not taking it. I'm not taking it. Uh uh. So it, I did not expect to get back on on the dash uh, at all. I didn't think even even with going into another area that I don't normally go to, like I'm about 20 miles away from my own area or well, 15 to 20. But at least I'm in somewhere where I don't normally go. And I don't think it gives any type of advantage because there's probably other people that do it. But. Certainly, if one if an area is so saturated that you just can't make any money, you, you what choice do you have? You have to try something else. But the salute the part of this. So we talk about solutions here, right? People want to know solutions. The solutions is we're going to have to go back for temporarily or whatever to doing a W-2 job. But you're going to have to find one that doesn't want to put a J-A-B in your arm. Make sure you do that. That's important, folks, because the people who are awake know what that stuff really is. You want to keep away from that. Trust me. If you've taken it, I feel sorry for you. Um, I really do. <laughs> you better be praying to God that he heals you of whatever's in you. And I would stay away from any other J-A-Bs, okay? Please, folks, listen to what I'm telling you. I'm telling you the truth, <clears throat> okay? Ah, here's one for twelve sixty. Archelitos. Okay, I'm not doing this one. You know why? 
because they want me to go back about six miles to pick this up and then come back to this area, and I'm not doing that. If I'm going to do that, I'm going to take one that's going in the direction and then stay out there, but then that'll take me out of my zone. So I don't want to do that either, <clears throat> you know. Uh, let's see. Oh, Norwood. Norwood had a huge area, and they knocked it all the way down now. <laughs> okay, so I'm out of the hot zone. I'm not, I don't chase the hot zones, but I'm near a bunch of zones. You know what I mean? You got to make your, well, it's hard to do it, but you got to make your own hot zone. I'm at, at like a mall that has like, seven different restaurants and stuff so there's a chance i'll get something out of here you know but anyways i just thought i'd make another video just to let you know what's going on <clears throat> hope you're all doing well and i'll catch you guys and gals in the next one take care okay folks <clears throat> i'm gonna read some more comments i already like uh read and responded by clicking back to you with a hat if you got that that you know that I list, you know, watched it. I might have responded in a text, but if you don't see a comment here, don't worry about it. I read it, and uh, believe me, I try to get as many comments in. Now I might have to end this video abruptly to go on a call, on a DoorDash dr ride, so we'll see. So let me start right in. So Deborah Williams says DoorDash should list list that you can make up to six dollars an hour driving for them. DoorDash always hiring new drivers. <laughs> Matthew Aradano <clears throat> says, peak pay in my Brownsville, Texas market is extremely rare. A friend of mine recently signed up for DoorDash last week, and since he's a new driver, the algorithm was sending him bangers that I wasn't seeing as a veteran driver. Yeah, see, they do this if you're a new, if you're a new driver. They, they, they tend to take care of the new drivers because they want to suck them in. They want to reel them in like fish. On a, on, a, on a pole, you know what I mean? On a, on, a, on a hook. It's the same thing. And then eventually they slowly let them go. And then they're in the same boat as we are, right? Matthew says, uh, this was in a response to me interrupting and interjecting in the videos. I'm sorry that that happens sometimes, folks. But there's really important information critically that I need to tell you. And if I don't tell you right away, I'll forget what I need to tell you. So I'm sorry, but it's my style. I, I, I know. So Matthew says, uh, Michael Snow, I welcome Brian's commentary, interruptions, and interjections in the video, in all of, on all of his videos. He has a cool accent, and I could listen to him talk all day. Thanks, brother. Especially... While I'm driving for these shitty gig companies and fighting traffic for a crappy tip, Brian's videos help me get through the day. Thanks, Brian. You're welcome. Sorry if it bothers people. I'm sorry about that. Storm 4 says, The world has given us into the hands of the wicked. The righteous will flourish like, like a palm tree. Endure, endure, endure. Yep, absolutely. Amen to that. Right out of the Bible. Tom Young says, Taxi drivers won't be employees. Um... I don't know about that, Tom. You might be right about that, but I can assure you that it's going to happen across the board. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to fight it, but yeah, I, I don't I don't know the answer to that. I know rideshare people will definitely, uh, or delivery drivers. I know that for sure. But taxis, I'm not I'm not absolutely sure because the taxis actually might be getting protected a little bit because they got so screwed in the past. You know, they have the, hey, listen, I was a taxi driver. They had, you know, the hackney license for the drivers that have to go through the background checks. And then you, they, then the companies, look at this 270 coming in. Look at this folks. Hold on a second. Look at this 270 for eight miles. <laughs> oh, this is great. Look at this beauty. Jersey Mike's, oh man, anyone that would even do that is, is a complete fool and idiot, really, you know? So anyways, back to the taxis, I don't know the answer to that, but that's that's actually a good question there, uh, Tom, or, or, or an answer, you know, you might be right. Thomas Schubeck says, you should uh, do a live stream with, where a few of us can call in on the show, really. Oh, believe me, Thomas, I, I want to do it, and I'm going to try to do it. But to be honest with you, I'm just going to be totally honest with you. I tell you guys all the time. You know, I, I used to have internet at my house. I can't afford the internet, folks. I had to let the internet go. So I can't, like, hook up 
I mean, all I have really right now is my phone or I go to the library or something like that. And I'm able to, thank God, I'm able to do a lot of stuff on this phone. It's amazing with the different apps and things that I know. I mean, I'm, I'm not a computer wizard, but I know a lot of stuff because I've been doing this stuff for a long time. I know how to edit videos. I have edit video, edit videoing, video editing software on my computer and stuff like that. But I just can't do what those guys do because I don't, I don't have the luxury to sit home. I mean, I'll, I'll do, I'll do it in my own time. I promise you, I will. I'll let you know. I'll give you guys advance notice. Are you kidding me? I would love to have you guys and gals come into the live stream so we could have a big chat because I'm going to tell you something. Once I start doing that or when I do it, we will be the talk of the town on, on YouTube. We will. Because you guys can really voice your opinions in the live stream. You know what I'm saying? The reason I, re I read all these comments is because it's sort of like a live stream. Because when you're live, you know, you guys are running all these comments and then I'd be reading them. You know what I mean? So, no, good good question and I'll try to do that. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, this is from the fake red zone video I did. Old boy 700 says, hot zone status are not in real time. That's why many times you won't receive any order if you chase a red zone. This is way no wait. This is way no one. No one should rely on this metric. Yeah, abs absolutely. Timothy Slaughter, welcome back, my friend. <clears throat> he says, I have been having more discussions with drivers out in the field asking how they choose offers to take. I definitely do not challenge their decisions when, when and if they tell me how they do their job. But it's really interesting that some drivers more. Wait, some drivers more than I could imagine just take whatever comes to them. Not all these folks watch YouTube for gig info. Yep, you're you're a, you're a thousand percent right on that one, <laughs> and it's doing them an injustice. By the way, most don't. I'll show them all the channels, and they are surprised. Wow. So we still need to spread the word out here, but do it in a respectful way. Yeah, I I do agree with you on that. Unfortunately, it's probably too late for that. Cats out of the bag. That's that's you uh, that you can get your stuff delivered without no tip. Not cool. Yeah, you know, man, you were you were a thousand billion percent right, uh, Tim, because you you were you were the one who you catched uh, you f you had the catchphrase. Um, we are creating a a nation of no tippers, right? And that's so true. And who who was whose fault ultimately was it? It was us as drivers, the people who became top dashers and stuff like that. Okay, but whose real fault is it? It's the companies for putting us into these paradigms and make and and, and saying, well, you if we throw a carrot in front of you, you're going to chase that with a stick like a rabbit, right? Or a greyhound going around a track chasing a rabbit, right? Absolutely, I agree. Lima Golf Bravo says, do you have a link to the interview? I don't see it on Pedro's channel. Oh, you're talking about the interview that I did? Um, I can't put it in this in this video. I'll try to do a separate video, um, Lima Golf Bravo. Yeah, um, it's if you scroll down, I mean, it's way it's it's was three and a half, four months ago. So you have to go back. But all you'll see, you'll see a picture of Pedro with his beard. He's on the left side. And then uh, then on the right side, it says DoorDash sucks. That was the, the uh, live stream that I did. <clears throat> Ida Hat says, war with Russia. You don't realize we live under a world government. World War Three is the war against the people. Harvest time for souls. Yep. Well, that's coming. It's coming, folks, unfortunately. Reverend Tacos says, I have a few solutions to all of the Dash's issues, but they're not going to like it. But there are the solutions. Uh, wait a minute. But here are the solutions I first have of a hiring freeze and bring some stricter hiring requirements, so that every driver for do for Dash must have at least ten years of driving experience with no major DMV traffic violations. Hold on, this is uh, another crappy one. I'm not going to take. I sort of agree with you here, Reverend Taco. He says. Um, a mandate that all drivers in full, but I mean, the, the reality is no one has 10 years experience driving. I would, I would tend to say more like maybe three to five years experience, something like that. 
Uh, let's see. A mandate for all drivers to inform their insurance company that they will be using this personal vehicle as a business and carry insurance. No, I don't agree with that because that's leading your hands into the idiots. That that's that's not the answer. That is not the answer. Because the insurance is not about you being insured and protecting you. It's about making money for the companies, folks. Do you know in New Hampshire, you don't have to carry any insurance at all? You can just drive around free. But if you hit a, a car and you cause damage, they can sue you for your house or your your apartment or your, your, your belongings, okay? But you don't have to have it. It's not a requirement. I don't, I don't believe, I don't agree with that. Now, let's see, uh... And they will be using their personal vehicle and extra carry extra insurance if they plan on becoming a dasher and also require the dashes on bicycles or i.e. bike or scooters to have the same amount of driving driving experience and mandate that all dashes carry some kind of liability insurance. See, I don't believe in mandates at all. Mandates are not laws, by the way, so I don't agree with you on that. However, it's a fine line. Because what the companies are doing to us, what else can we do? We do need laws in place to protect protect, protect drivers. We're not trying to protect companies. We're trying to protect drivers and not in that way. So I disagree. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Demand that dashes pass a drug test and go to regular breathalyzer exams. I do agree on that. Look at this. Okay, you know what? This one's a two mile. Uh, no, I don't want to do it. I'm not doing it. It's not enough money. Sorry. Um, I do agree with drug tests, and because there's a lot of people that are driving around stoned and drunk in their cars, folks. Absolutely. Um, so I do agree with that. Uh, let's see. And that, my friends, will weed out 90% of the useless, lazy dashes that think they can get away with declining. And the, no, listen. I agree with declining. I, I do not agree with, with that. I, I'm on the cherry picker's side. See, you, I mean, I don't know what you're trying to get at here, Reverend Taco, but you seem to be on the side of the companies. I mean, that's not what my channel's about. I'm exposing these companies. He says that will weed out the 90% of useless, lazy dashes that I think can get away with declining, declining, and cherry picking. Those days should be over. No, what should be over is the company's trying to bring us into those those programs to to make us take everything that's what needs to end not not the cherry picking we're, we're supposed to be independent right independent contractors i mean what what side are you on reverend taco holy crap my advice to doordash is to start thinking about thinning out the herd what doordash needs to do in my opinion is 90 percent of drivers go back to a building or smaller workforce and devoted and dedicated drivers and put a commission only payment system plus tips for all the drivers and that weed out all the useless dashes no no that's not the answer as i said in my, my advice to doordash is to set up a commission payment system on par with the waiter or waitress who earns shift plus tips in my opinion no what they need here's my solution all right i'm, I'm done with that comment my, my solution is mandatory 20% tips for all people in the service industry, including waiters and waitresses, not just drivers. Like, you cannot go into a restaurant unless you're going to pay a 20% fee. In other words, when you pay the bill, it's taken out automatically, and you cannot get it back, period. And then also a 90% base pay for all drivers, uh, that are going to drive their own cars. 90% of it, which means whatever the delivery charge is, they get 90% of it. How do you like that for solutions? Uh, JD says, face it, <clears throat> the DoorDash app now behaves like a spoiled child and throws fits when it can't get its way. Yep, absolutely. <clears throat> Corinthian says, thanks for reading my comment, Brian. I sent you an email so be on the lookout for it. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I haven't checked my emails as late, but I'm gonna. I'll check them within a day or two. Thank you, Mr. Corinthians. Uh, look at this beauty coming in, folks. <laughs> this is the same one. Remember the 271? This one's 303 for 8.9. That's the same exact one that came in. Only they're sending it back to me. I mean, imagine this: eight miles, and they can't get anyone in eight miles. They can't get anyone in eight miles to take that. That's, I mean, first of all, no one, you'd be an idiot to take it. 
but that's they're sending it eight miles away for me no so april b says okay so now you guys are telling each other how to run your channel wait a minute okay so now you guys are telling each other how to run a channel mm, who cares it's your channel his channel and and their channel do whatever you want well i do agree with you yeah, I do agree with you. I mean, maybe I maybe I overstepped my bounds about saying, you know, how someone should do something and this and that. But here's the deal. When it comes down to it, people are going to tend to shy away from fluff or not channels that are lying to them unless they want to stay in Alice in Wonderland. If you want to be shown every day how to make $500 a day, fake channels that tell you that, then go ahead. Watch it it's what you're going to watch it for entertainment. I mean, do you guys listen, you know what I should do? What and you guys write in the comments, if you want to see it, if you want, I can pretend to make $300 a day and lie to you guys. I'll, I could do that for a little while. If you want me to do it, I'll make like, I'll show you only the premium uh, stuff that comes through. And I'll pretend that like, I'll do it on a Friday, but put a video out on a Tuesday of like all the $15 and $20 ones like over the course of a week, and I'll put like one giant video together saying, maybe I should do that as a joke. I mean, seriously. And then and, and do what everyone else does and see if I can draw people into the channel. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Don't you, don't you guys want me to lie to you a little bit? Just a little bit? Maybe, you know, give you 99% lies, but 1%, I'm sorry, 99% truth, but 1% lies? No, that wouldn't be good, would it? It'd be like taking an ice cream cone and putting uh, dung from a bird, bird shit on top of an ice cream cone and calling it chocolate sprinkles, right? And I'm sorry I had to use that analogy. But like, okay, so the ice cream cone tastes great until you have to eat the shit, right? Terrible, terrible, right? Oh, anyways, I had to say those things, folks, just so you could like have a uh, like a little slap in the face of reality of like what my channel is different from all the other channels. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just sick of being lied to. But I mean, no, good comment, April. April says, uh, why are these channels starting to be so controversial? I'm starting to feel like I'm watching a bunch of soap operas. Yeah, I agree. Payman Alley says, it doesn't matter whether you warn them or not. When the students are ready, the teachers will appear. May God reward you for your efforts. Thank you very much. Appreciate that comment. Corinthians uh, 2 says, Hebrews 4. Oh, okay. I'm, I'll read this later, I guess. I'll read this later. I'll keep that open. Um, if anyone want to read those those spiritual uh, messages right out of the Bible. Julia Stryker says, New Oh, here we go. An $11 one uh, for 12 my And they want me to go to Boston. They want me to, so it's taking me to Dedham. I'm not doing that. No, no way. Because now if I took that, they'd draw me in and it'd be just terrible. I, I can tell you, I've been there a million times. It sucks. Uh, new. Oh, thank you for putting that in there. New comment, start at 2430. Uh, Julia Stryker says, there's no point in arguing with fools. They'll bring you down on their level and beat you with experience. Yeah, I mean, whatever, you know, it's, but thank you. I appreciate that comment, Julius. You know that. Michael Alexander says, they definitely pause you out if you reject orders with the weird picture of the lady walking in the opposite direction with the DoorDash bag and the other ghost-like figures in the background, which I guess is supposed to be us missing out. But if they send us a 275 or 375 orders of any amount of miles, I feel like I'm enabling DoorDash and the no tippers to keep keep it up. Yeah, you are, because you're training the algorithm that that's what you'll take. I did a shopper order bef uh, before where it was nine seventy five. I finished the delivery and saw that the customer tipped zero. That means they actually had to go in and back out the low ball tip that might have been suggested. So it was all base pay. Yep, they have to put zero. Then they have to move their finger over to zero again, and then move their finger over to zero again. Yep. They back it out. Those are miserable human beings. Miserable. Um, they're, they're scum to do that. It's fine. Let's see. It's fine, but it's not fine because the customer is in a mansion. And, they, and, and it's funny because I, you guys probably, 
I either left that video of me showing you the mansions and stuff. Uh, hopefully, it'll be in this one because I'm, I'm going to try to combine all of the the uh, the talks I did today all in one. Look at this. The 307 for 8.9 miles comes in again. Look at that. Boy, they want me to take that in the worst way, don't they? Um, let's see. He says, uh, it's fine, but it's not fine because the customer in the mansion they live in will continue to back out tips, which is pretty screwed up for us going out and shopping for their ass, and they and they totally don't appreciate it. See, this is when, you know, Michael, I mean, I'm just going to tell you. I'm not telling you what to do, but if I, this is why I usually... Uh, I mean, as soon as I, if I don't meet the customer at the door, but I take a picture of the thing and then I complete the delivery, if I'm standing near that door, I might be very inclined to knock on the door and say, you know, knock, knock, knock. And if they come to the door, say, hi, how are you? I said, you, you ordered the food and everything? I says, uh, and then I would say to them, how come you didn't put a tip in there for me? Do you know that I that I shop for you inside the store? Do you know that I use my own car? I get $2 per delivery to do the job that you had me just do. And your lazy ass couldn't go to the store and, and you had to have me, uh, you know, DoorDash give me an order and you didn't put a tip in there. And you had, and you know that you didn't put a tip in there because you had to back out of it and put zero, zero, zero. See, I encourage all of you to use the DoorDash app at least once and experiment and even like do mock deliver uh, mock, mock ordering where you would order something but you don't you don't really order it let's see 13 miles nope i'm not going to Dedham. sorry i'm not going towards boston uh-uh i'm staying at least i'm already far, far away from where i'm supposed to be i'm not going to go even further screw that um that was an eight miler for 13. And the people in Boston, those people are the ones who will pull back the tip. But anyways, when I'm at the door and I tell the guy this or the girl, yeah, right, at least that lamb based them. Now, you know you're going to get a bad rating from them when you do that. But their rating that they give you is not going to bring bring you down out of a Like if you have a 5.0 or a 4.9 something, you're not, they're not going to lower your, your rating that, that bad. But it's worth it telling the customer off and telling them how you feel and say, you have to be a pretty despicable person not to leave a tip for the driver. That is that is just horrendous. And it's happened to all of us. Excellent um, comment, Michael. Tobacco Rose says, hear what Andy says about tips. Waitresses walk out with hundreds of dollars, never counted, never fired. Least they make is... Minimum wage, what they actually end up paying taxes on is crapshoot. Yep. He says, I know Jesus through the book of James. Your church would probably kick me out, but I do I do search for truth and logic. Uh, I don't have a church. <laughs> I'm not a pastor. Uh, look at this one. Let's see. Oh, look at this beauty, folks. Oh, it's going to Beirut. <laughs> to Beirut. Look at that, folks. B-E-I-R-U-T. <laughs> What is this, Beirut, uh, Lebanon? It's going to Boston for 12 miles, 793 for 12. No, thank you. Holy crap. Hey, at least the orders are coming in, right? I'm enjoying re reading these comments. Mike McCormick says, I'm in the Cleveland area, and tonight I might not earn $10. I've tried everything, pausing, pausing the dash, editing dash, uninstall and reinstall dash. I'm getting offers like two to five miles. Here we go. Here's one. Ah, nope, no thanks. Five miles for five seventy-five. No thanks. Um, I'm getting two to five miles. This is just this. This is off the charts. Charts horrific. Storm Four says the beast gig channel by. Oh, I'm sorry, the best gig channel by far. The fact that you read every comment word word for word says a lot about your character. Thank you, Storm. Appreciate it. <coughs> I tried to. <coughs> Let's see. Someone. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, here's another one. No, I'm not doing that for nine miles. No, if it was 11 for like five or four, I'd do it. Not doing it. And I don't expect two to one jobs, by the way, folks. But you got to get relatively close. You know what I mean? I mean, even a buck 50 would be good. That I'm not taking that. Tobacco Row says, does, does a DoorDash's tips work like a waitress tips mostly cash and a few charge cards well 
we are on the same level as that because we are we are service employees is what we are. We're not independent contractors, but we service people with our cars and the and the people need to know that. Like I, I feel like making up a card, like an actual card that says your tips are, are very much appreciated the next time you do order DoorDash because uh, we as drivers are independent contractors and we use our own vehicles. We do not get paid from DoorDash whatsoever. In other words, I don't want to lie to them, but if you tell them, well, you're getting a $2 base pay, they'll just think, oh, well, that's great. You're getting 2 bucks. That's awesome. So rather than do that, just say we don't, we don't receive anything from DoorDash. We're doing it for tips solely. And then maybe people would start tipping us. How's that for a solution? You want solutions? That's another one. Uh, <clears throat> he says, I don't dash, but it sounds like to me you need a separate, wait, to separate your personals from your pri uh, pri wait, proprietorship and run it like any other business. This isn't a business, Tobacco Row. This is a scam. They're scamming us. He says, you know the guy, Torp, six toes on each foot, 12 all together. <laughs> oh, yeah? Does he really have six toes? Let me know. <clears throat> Let me know, Torp. Uh, Thomas, V13. <clears throat> he says, it happens when I do <clears throat> a trash update and the last for a few days should go back to normal, but the pauses do get stuck and kick you off possibly uh, on purpose. Yes, I think they're literally very incompetent and made the app too complex to combat cherry pickers causing all the glitch glitches. Yep, they're, they're, trying to, they're trying to do something, folks, and it's not good what they're trying. Infinity Lab says when programming for cell phones, there is a standard event that tells any program when it's being cast into the background. Oh, okay. This is the answer for what they're doing. Remember how I told you if um, if we are on another app and then DoorDash pauses you? This is the answer to it because it, Infinity Labs actually is a programmer, I, I, I think, because I think he told me that in one of his comments. So he says, when the programming for our cell phones, there is a standard event that tells any program when it is being cast into the background. The purpose is supposed to be to make sure to have anything important before the app is put to sleep but these company companies can use it to red flag you as inactive oh wow oh well we just got our answer and i do believe your message your your uh your solution there yep that's what that's exactly what's happening um Okay, so Reverend Taco, here he goes again. Look, I'm not a fan of becoming a food carrier for life. I think dashing is a full-time job with no other prospects for life. Sucks. Let's see. Okay, uh, I'm not going to read this. I mean, look, dude, like, I, I, I'm i sorry, but, like, come up with some better things, you know? I mean, holy Moses, whatever. Uh, I, you know, it's like just crazy. Everything's crazy. I don't want to read foolish, foolish comments. I mean, I read, I do read these comments, but like, come on. Oh, okay. $7 for four miles. No, thank you. <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, Chris C Cohia says the app sucks. I constantly get paused every day. Yep. Crazy Snake Lady, 78. She says, I'm an adult with autism, also anxiety issues at times. Gig work works best for me at this time, and I refuse to take... Wait a minute. I refuse to take certain something in my arm. Also, I like gig channels that are... Let's see. What the hell? Eight miles for six dollars. I'm surprised. I haven't seen Uber rocking like this where they're giving like a lot of... Uh, deliveries but i'm i'm just not going to take those ones because if i'm going to go anywhere i'm going to try to start going back to where where i live on that you know 20 miles from here you know so bob's diary says uh bob's diary this is from a day ago bob's diary says it happened to me a lot well not as much as the last year doordash don't open the window to me only in in the nighttime for 30 minutes every one and a half hours. Yeah, DoorDash sucks. No tip, no trip. Oh, I agree with you, brother. Say no to drugs says you can't multi-op in my area. The orders are going the wrong direction from each other. You give these people 
device location on all the apps. All these companies know where you are because of the phone. Right, but you can try to take one that's going in the same direction. Like, say you're at a restaurant and next door to that restaurant is another delivery that's going that way. You can do it, but I know what you're saying. It's very rare, and I agree with you. Clark Bridges says, I'll be, I'd be happy if they just make base pay $5 in mandatory tips. Yep, I agree. He says, we need flexes, market 66000 or something from DoorDash Plus. He has a payroll route on top of that, but he's he's in Jersey. He's talking about Mr. Flex. I, I've never really watched his channel. I don't know much about it, but uh, Matthew, said, Matthew says, oh, here we go. His, look at this. I'm, I mean, these are coming in like quite consistently, but they're trying to draw me into the Boston area. Let me go back to see what I got for a tip in here. Oh, a three dollar and four. See, I don't even send thanks for these tips if they're below. None of these have been thanked if they're below five bucks. They have to be five dollars for me to send thanks. Because if you send thanks to them when it's a low tip, then that gives them the right to keep tipping you low. You understand? Matthew Aridano says I have those weird random fa phantom pauses all of a sudden with the DoorDash app. Uh, hold on. <clears throat> It happens from time to time, like if I'm multi-apping or watching a YouTube video or using my internet search engine. Yep, same thing. You guys are experiencing all the same stuff. It's crazy, isn't it? Uh, RB says, <clears throat> crazy story that happened to me today. I was given a batch from Walmart Spark for forty-eight fifty. They did me dirty. The whole batch was screwed up from all of one, uh, all of one of the orders for can't being was canceled, but still on the list. I had to say I was returning to the store. I was even taking the location for another order. Was taken off my list, which was weird. But I, when I concluded with my order, I was paid hmm three dollars and eleven cents. Oh man, that's terrible. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the um, the comment video here. I want to thank each and every one of you who've come to the video to comment. I, there's there's gonna be more comments I'm gonna read. I just don't want to continue to go and go and go. I'll just kind of separate them. So thank you for listening to today's video. And I know there was a lot of different parts in the video, but thank you. And I will catch you guys and gals on the next one. Take care.